Now over the next number of weeks I'll be looking at the story of Joseph and Joseph is a very special character in the Bible. You can read about him in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 37 and of course you'll remember the story about Abraham, how that God chose Abraham and told him to leave his, his country and his family and to go into a, a special land that God would show him and God would make of him a great nation. And of course you remember how that Abraham gave Abraham's son was called Isaac and Isaac um, had a son called Jacob and of course this is Jacob here and this is Jacob's son Joseph. Now Jacob had 12 sons we're told in the, in the Bible and Joseph, but Joseph was his favourite son and we read that the reason for that was because Joseph was the son of his old age. And Joseph is a very special character in the Bible as we said because um, he's one of the few characters in the Bible that there's no sin attributed to him. Um, you can read about you know different people in the Bible and the things that they did wrong um, and there's very you know you can think about different characters like David, how David you know killed Uriah and did different things that were wrong and Noah as well and but Joseph is one of the few characters as well as Daniel um, who we don't read about anything that he did that was wrong. Of course we know that we're all born sinners, we've all uh, disobeyed God and we've all come short of God's perfect standard and um, so no doubt Joseph did do things that were wrong but the reason why and there's nothing mentioned about him that he did wrong is because he is a type of the Lord Jesus. And we're going to see that in his story, how that he just, everything that happened to Joseph in his life just reminds us about the, the, the Lord Jesus and what he did for us upon the cross. Now this verse here says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And of course that was God the Father speaking of the Lord Jesus and how that uh, God was so pleased with his son because um, he was so always doing what was right and as well that he was going to go to the cross in order to pay the price for our sins. And the Lord Jesus could say as well, I, I do all the, always those things which please the Father. So, you know, we're, we're, we're said there that uh, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons because he was the son of his old age. And it's not really right, of course, to show preference to people, you know, to love some people better than others. That's not something that we should do. Um, but the reason why it's brought out in this story is because it shows us how much God the Father thought of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that... Um, he always did those things which pleased him. And you can read about Joseph, how that uh, jo Jacob made a special coat. The Bible says a coat of many colours. And that just meant something that showed that he was um, very important. Um, it's a coat that maybe royalty or, or would have worn. And it just showed everybody that Joseph was the one that his father loved the best. And of course that made... His brothers very jealous. They, they didn't like the idea of Jacob liking Joseph more than them. And they, they hated Joseph because of that, unfortunately. And they couldn't speak peaceably to him. And we'll just turn over the page here. And of course you'll remember how that Joseph dreamed dreams. And he was able to interpret those dreams. Um, we'll read about those later on when he arrives in Egypt. But Joseph had a couple of dreams at, um, at the start when he was just a young boy, 17 years of age. And he was with his, his brothers and he, he told them, I have dreamed a dream. And he said, we were all cutting sheaves of corn in the field and my sheaf stood upright and all of your sheaves bowed down to my sheaf. And of course the brothers couldn't understand what this meant and they thought well Joseph must think he's better than us and, and they were very angry 
And the Bible says they hated him the more for his words. And um, he came to them again and he says, I have dreamed another dream. And if they hated him for the first dream, they're going to hate him even more when they hear the next dream. And Joseph said, I dreamed a dream and the sun and the moon and the 11 stars all bowed down to me. And his father, the Bible says his father rebuked him. That means he told him off. And he said, are your, are your mother and father going to bow down to you? And the brothers envied him. It says they envied him because of this. And those dreams, um, although the brothers and the, the, the mother and father didn't understand the meaning, really it was these dreams were pointing to a time when they actually would bow down to Joseph in the land of Egypt. And we'll find out about that toward the end of the story. But they didn't understand and perhaps Joseph didn't really understand the meaning of the dream, how it would come to pass because sometimes God uses dreams to speak to people. And in the old, especially in the Old Testament when the Bible wasn't completed and God spoke to Joseph in this way. And Joseph maybe thought, well, this is an important dream, but he didn't really understand how it would come to pass. And this verse here says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And I wrote that verse just to remind us that we should show love to everybody equally. We shouldn't love some people more than others, although sometimes it's difficult to do, but we should love everybody just like God loves everybody. God wants all people to be saved. There's, um, he loves everybody the same. So we'll turn over the page and the Bible says that Jacob was wondering how his sons were doing. They were out in the field um, with the sheep, with his flocks. Now Jacob lived in a place called Hebron and Jacob's sons had taken the flocks away north uh, to a place called Shechem and it's quite a, quite a journey away and Jacob said to his son Joseph, he said, go to your brothers and find out whether it is well with them, whether, whether they are doing well and the flock is doing well because Jacob cared about his, his sons and Joseph was obedient and he went to find out how his brothers were doing. And he arrived at Shechem and there's nobody there. And the, the, the Bible says he was wandering through a field whenever a man found him. And he said, "What? who are you looking for? What are you looking for? And Joseph said, I'm looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they're feeding the sheep. And the, the man said to Joseph, he said, I heard that your brothers had gone north to Dothan and they're feeding the sheep there. So that's where Joseph headed next. And his brothers, even before he arrived with them, his brothers saw him coming from afar. And of course, they, they didn't like Joseph and they thought to themselves, well, here comes that dreamer and I know what we'll do. We'll kill him and throw him in a pit and we'll, we'll then we'll take away his coat and we'll see what becomes of his dreams then. And so that's what they plotted to do. And this verse here says, um, it's speaking of a parable about the, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus told a parable once to the, the Pharisees and he said about this man that owned a vineyard and he said he was sending his servants to to take the fruit of the vineyard because it, this um, this vineyard was was run by servants and they were to take all the grapes and they were to to sell them maybe and to take the money and give them to the owner but they weren't doing that they were just keeping everything for themselves and the, the Lord Jesus told this parable he said um, this this owner of the vineyard he sent servants and they, these the ones that were running the vineyard, some of the, these 
men that were sent to them to get the fruits. Some of them they beat up and some of them they killed. And the owner of the vineyard thought, well, they haven't treated my servants very well. Maybe I should send them my son and they will reverence my son. And that's what this verse says. But last of all, he sent unto them his son saying, they will reverence my son. And of course, the end of the parable says that, of course, they, they didn't reverence the son. They said to themselves, this is the heir of the vineyard. This is the one who is to inherit the vineyard. If we kill him, then the vineyard will belong to us. And of course, the Lord Jesus was talking about how the, the people of Israel, how they would, the rulers would take him and crucify him. And they thought that would get rid of him. But of course, he was dying for our sins. But Joseph came to the brothers and that's what they plotted to do. They, they plotted to kill him and to get rid of him. And then they said, let's see what becomes of his dreams then. But Reuben, he was the eldest son and he knew, well, that was a bad idea. They would get in trouble. And, and he said to, to the, the brothers, he said, don't let us kill him, but let's just throw him in a pit and... Um, That'll get rid of him. We'll, we'll not have to worry about him anymore. So that's what the brothers did. They um, were, were just thinking about how Joseph was like the Lord Jesus. And how that they, the brothers really hated Joseph. Even though he hadn't done anything wrong. And it's the same for the Lord Jesus. The, the Bible says in the Psalms about the Lord Jesus. They hated me without a cause. And it says in John's Gospel as well about the Lord Jesus. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not or did not recognise him. And it says he came unto his own, that's the, the Jewish people, and his own received him not. Uh, but it says as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the, the children of God. So that's what they did to, to poor Joseph. They took him, they, they stripped the, the special coat from him and they threw him into this pit, which was like a dry well. There was no water in it. And you know, that reminds us of the Lord Jesus as well. You know, how that they, they took his robe off him and how that they, the, the, it says in the Psalms about the, uh, when, when the Lord Jesus was put in the prison and about when he was on the cross, it says that, Behold, I sink in the deep mire where there is no standing. So this just reminds us of how the Lord's own people plotted um, to crucify him, to get rid of him. And so Joseph was in this pit, and the, the Bible says the brothers, they sat down to eat bread. So they'd done this terrible thing, and it just shows you how little they thought of what they had done. That they were able to sit down and have lunch while their poor, poor brother was in this pit. And that's what the Bible says as well about the Lord Jesus. That whenever he was on the cross, the people that were watching, it says they sat down and watched him there. And so it shows us really that the, the coldness of people's hearts that they were able to, to do this to the, the Lord Jesus and yet to think nothing of it. Of it. And that's what this verse just tells us about. This is what the Lord Jesus said would happen to him. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. And so that's what happened um, to the Lord Jesus whenever he uh, was arrested and crucified and now of course Reuben he thought to himself well maybe whenever the brothers the other brothers are out of the way I can come and rescue Joseph and he wanted to rescue Joseph and send him back to Jacob his father but unfortunately that didn't happen and whenever the brothers were sitting down and eating their lunch they saw a Camels coming and they, they saw men called Ishmaelites or descendants of Ishmael coming and they were taking um, spices 
and things down to sell in Egypt because there was lots of trade routes and there was lots of people uh, traveling and selling different things in different cities. And so they thought Judah, he had this idea and he said, don't let our hand be upon him or don't let us, don't let us be responsible for his death. And what profit is it if he dies? Sure, we can sell him to these Ishmaelites as a slave and he will be taken um, away and then we'll not need to worry about um, what happens to him. It'll be out of our hands. And so that's what the brothers did. And they, they lifted up Joseph out of the pit and they sold him to these Ishmaelites from Midian. And the, these um, Midianites, they, they bought Joseph for 20 pieces of silver which is the price of a slave. And so that reminds us too of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we're, we remember how that um, a man of the same name, Judas, he betrayed the Lord Jesus. He went to the chief priests and he said, I know where Jesus is if you want to come and arrest him. And of course, they, the, the chief priests agreed to give Judas 30 pieces of silver in order that they might come and arrest Jesus out of the way of the crowd. So that this, you can see how through the life of Joseph, it just reminds us so much of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us upon the cross. So Joseph was sold to the Midianites and they took him away down into Egypt. You see there in the pyramids. And this verse says, and, and this is speaking of the Lord Jesus, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise. He, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they had to come up with some story. Reuben came back. Reuben must have been separated from the brothers for a while, and he came back and looked in the pit, and was shocked to find that Joseph was gone, and he presumed Joseph must have been killed. And he said to the other brothers. Joseph is dead and me what's going to happen to me where am I going to go because he was going to have to go back to his father and tell him you know Joseph has been killed and so what they did was they took Joseph's coat and they killed one of the goats that they were looking after and they dipped Joseph's coat in blood in the, in the blood of the goat and they sent the coat to their father Jacob and they said, look and see whether this is your son's coat or not. And of course, Joseph, Jacob knew straight away that it was Joseph's special coat. And Jacob thought, well, Joseph must have been killed by a wild animal and he's been torn in pieces. And Joseph, Jacob was very, very sad. And his, his brothers tried to comfort him, but he just wouldn't be comforted because Joseph was gone and of course he didn't know um, that Joseph was still alive and that he was now in Egypt and we'll continue the story of Joseph next week we'll look what, at what happens to Joseph when he's down in Egypt how the Lord looks after him and how that he um, eventually becomes the saviour of the whole world through what he does um, during the time of famine. So you can think about Joseph, you can think about how he's like the Lord Jesus, and we'll, we'll look at the rest of the story next week. Now, you can check in the description again, there, there's a, a short quiz if you want to answer some of the questions about the story, look in the description of the video, and don't forget to like it and share it so that other people will know about um, the videos and be able to watch them as well. Thank you very much.